my supervisor. Right, Toby? Ugh. Well, I figured out how to put it together and all that good stuff. But I had to glue some spots and I'm waiting for that to dry. And I'll have to pick up and clean up. It's lying on its side right now. Here we go. It's going to look like that. I think it'll work. It's Tuesday and I finally finished this thing and I made a drawer for it. I also Frankenstein some more pieces to make a drawer. That's what I made. The laundry basket goes kind of underneath in there and I can just pull it out. I can pull the whole thing out or I can lean it forward to put stuff in there. And I made a drawer. I don't have a way to hold it in place or anything, but not sure what I'll put in there. I don't really want to set stuff on top, but I probably will end up putting something there. Huh. But I'm finished with that. That's all that remains of the whole desk unit. It's 3 p.m. now. I will probably go out since it's shady over on this side of the house now. Sit on my chair and dismantle that whole thing so it's easier to throw away. Yeah. I am I went to the store for a couple things. I wanted to get like fly paper, fly the things that hang, but then I thought if that falls down, Spencer will get a hold of it and that's a god awful mess. So I got some kind of contraption. It's like a big plastic jar. And has a, I'll show you, plastic jar, and in here is some kind of tablet that dissolves. You fill it halfway with water, and then this lid, you push this up, and uh, flies can go down in the top, but they won't be able to get back out. And the boy said after about a week it really starts to sink real bad, so it draws the flies. So I've got to think of where I can put it out in the back so that people can sit on the patio without going, Ooh, what is that smell? <laughs> yeah. These last few days, and it's taken me a lot longer than I wanted it to, it just... I don't have any desire to do anything. I don't have any desire to eat, you know, eat a lot or anything. It just maybe it's medicine, maybe it's depression. Maybe it's my age. I don't know. Went to the Dollar General store to get some tape cuz I was almost out of masking tape. And I thought that might be a cheaper place to get it. It's still expensive. And there was a man and woman and a dog sitting along the side of the store they're homeless he is 50 and she's 45 and they both look 60 and the dog was a little miniature pit bull it was a cute little doggy and the dog let me pet him and everything and we t I talked to the people and uh, how they ended up in their situation is they both have heart problems and she had a heart attack and was in the hospital and partially medically induced coma and she was in the hospital for 48 days and he needs heart medicine too and they can't afford it and live at the same time so they're homeless that's America folks they seem like really nice people they didn't look like drug addicts or anything usually you can tell a drug addict because they start talking about something really weird or they start staring off into space or something these guys seem real and uh, the guy is actually from Lee Summit Missouri originally when he was uh, a teenager and then he lost his job and then they had all those medical bills and that's why they're homeless I, I wanted to tell him he should write a book you should, and then you can make money off of that because a lot of people are interested in knowing all about that kind of thing and how did it happen and how do you live and stuff. He said people ask him how you live all the time and I wanted to tell him why don't you write a book. Now if I was 
the kind of person that was real savvy about it, I would write the book with them, you know, and split the profits. But I'm I don't I'm not a go getter, so <laughs> I'm lazy. Uh but if he could do that, I'm sure he'd make a lot of money. Oh God. What's the expression there? Except for the grace of God, therefore I am. In other words, I'm just lucky I'm not in that position. Very, very tired. I'm kind of depressed. I'm on the verge of tears a lot, so I'm not really sure what the hell is going on. And I get hungry, but I'm too friggin' lazy to make something. See? <laughs> Comes in handy. Oh, la. Uh... I don't know. I mean, sometimes I get really tired of things. But yesterday, when I picked Spencer up from school, I was just so happy. He wanted up, so I picked him up and he gave me a big kiss. Oh, I love that little kid. He is such a sweetheart. And we had fun at lunch. He fell asleep. He fell asleep on the way home in the car. And when we got home, I carried him up to his bed upstairs. And at first it was like, I don't want to take a nap. But then he saw his bed and I said, I'll lay down next to you. Boom, he was out like a light. He slept for two hours. And I laid on the floor, kind of like resting. Not really sleeping, but resting. And it was fairly comfortable. I don't care if it was a hard floor. It had a rug on it. And it had a sleeping bag all bunched up. So I, I had a wonderful time. When he woke up, we had lunch. And uh, we had a really good time. We, I taught him how to barter. Like he had a sandwich and some pretzels and some carrots. He dug into the pretzels right away. And then he wanted some Ritz crackers that Grandma had. And I said, I tell you what, I'll trade you a a pretzel, or no, I'll t trade you a cracker for one of your carrots. And he looked and he picked out a carrot for me and handed it to me and I handed him a cracker. <laughs> Teaching him how to trade. Well, that's what we do when we buy stuff, right? We trade money for goods. He's learning that you can't just expect something. Like, I bring crackers over, he's going to get them. No, he's got he's to gotta do something for them. I know it sounds really evil. But, uh, you know, I'm the kind of person that on Halloween when the kids go trick-or-treat, I'll say, you know, a joke, or can you dance or sing? You know, I make them do something. I make them work for it. I'm just handing them candy. And if they're not, you know, if they turn their nose up and doing a trick, they don't get a treat. I know that sounds really, really mean, but people have got to learn that it's give and take, you know. Not all take, take, take. And out here in California, it's just a different attitude. It's not, it's, I deserve it. Maybe that's just a new generation. I deserve it. So, uh, no. The homeless couple and I talked about the latest generation and how they don't know how to do anything. Unless their parents teach them, they don't know how to even boil water. He said he talked to a teenage boy last week and the kid was like, Ooh, and he would try to tell him something and the kid just was vacuous. That's, I hate to see that. I mean, if you're going to have children, parent them. You know, don't just have children just to have children. The world's got a lot of people in it already. You know, I was watching Neil deGrasse Tyson earlier, and uh, he said that if he can leave the world with something positive left behind, even if it's to suggest that never lose that interest for learning, he said then he feels like he's accomplished something. He says, schools don't really teach you anything. They're supposed to teach you the desire to know more, basically, he thinks and says. And I kind of agree. I mean, you know, I love to watch kids when they're discovering something. 
like centrifugal force or, or water uh, pressure or uh, the film of water on top, how you can float something very, very light on it or something. Just very, the various scientific things. And Spencer and I do a lot of these little tiny experiments and I make a big deal out of it. I call him a scientist and I tell him we have to have a hypothesis. And what do you think that's going to happen? Like a scientist does, you know. And it gets him thinking. He's only two years old, but he thinks a lot. You can, you can see it in his face that he's busy thinking of something. And I, that delights me to no end. Oh, God. Haven't talked to the guy from high school, and I really don't want to for a while. I gotta heal. I mean, it was just killing me. Just killing me. I, I just can't. I cannot be everybody's everything. I can't. I have more important close ties here to be my son and daughter-in-law's and Spencer's everything. I can't be spreading myself so thin that I can't do that. And even things that are free or almost free that are fun, I have to think about it. It's like, I don't know. I don't really want to do that. It costs money and I'm just trying to live as simply as possible. I'm going to go out and dismantle that desk so it can be thrown away better. Save some of the hardware on there. That hardware costs, you know, <laughs> when you have to buy it. I, think, I don't foresee them needing any, but at least I'll have it in a little bag. Oh, God. I have some bacon that needs fried up or cooked, and I have waffles to make, and... Uh, Maybe chicken soup or something. Don't know. I should do something before I get too tired. I'm too stinky. Upward and onward.